What is up guys? So, uh, I have recently found some much needed motivation to make my Z drift ready. Um, and I've just been kind of coming up with ideas and tackling things here and there. Um, but I forgot that I'm supposed to be filming these things so you guys can follow along. So let me kind of recap you up to what I've done um, to this point, including the last video, I believe. So um, if you're new to the channel, this is pretty much my stock Z, the 2010 370Z. Um, all I literally have done to it right now is uh, painted headlights, a eBay front lip, um, a Nardi steering wheel with some aftermarket seats, and then in the last video you saw me do the drift switch. Um, it has a Nismo exhaust and test pipes, but the new things I'm working on, um, the older, a couple of videos, ugh, a long time ago, I don't even know when it was, but one of the other videos I did for this car was putting the VLSD from a 350Z in it, um, which is great as a street car, but it does not do well when you're trying to hold a drift. So I'm going to be putting the old open diff back in the car, but this time welded. Um, so I'm finishing up welding that right now. Um, and I'm gonna throw that in with some white line bushings. Um, I put the rear one in when I did the VLSD, but I'm gonna do all of them this time. And then I have the Bell Raceworks diff brace on the way. Um, I'm getting some new wheels with some easier to find drift tires in a cheaper size than 19s by super wide. And uh, I'm getting some camber arms to help the wear be a little more tolerable. So hopefully in this video, I can kind of tackle all that because I'm not gonna really go into much detail on how to put a diff in this because I did in my other video. But basically this video should be taking this pretty much stock 370 um, and making it like a really easy budget drift setup. Um, oh, and also I'm gonna do some kind of free angle mods in the front to try to pick up a little bit of angle. So stay tuned. So last time I was at the garage, I started welding up um, this, but I ran out of welding wire. I got pretty much the, all, the whole other side's done and most of this side's done. So I just have to kind of go in and weld some of these gears together and then clean up all the schmutz. Uh, the other side's pretty well cleaned up. But then once this is all said and done, then I can go ahead and stick this in there. Finished up welding the new diff or the old diff, pulled the other one out. Man, I hate New England weather. New England winters. That Nismo exhaust isn't even a year old and it's just rusted to garbage. It snapped a bolt. Oh man, I had to leave the front half in and drop the cross member that's under there just to get the exhaust low enough. Oh boy, it's gonna be fun putting that all back together, but got the diff out. I'm pretty confident I should be able to get everything back together tonight. Um, I just gotta pull that apart and drop that bad boy in there top it off uh, and then actually before I put that in when I get the other diff out I'm going to change out those bushings yeah so I got the diff all kind of cleaned up the faces I threw in the white line um, front diff bushings I already have the rear one in the car which was the hardest one um, and now I'm about to torque the ring gear onto the welded open diff uh, and then put everything back together and hopefully get it in the car in a reasonable amount of time Ugh. You know, I haven't had the RX-7 in, let's see, like together or like something to work on since like February. So in the last four months, I haven't had anything really to wrench on. You know, I've done little things to the Z obviously, but nothing like that. I also, I feel like putting in the VLSD was easier. Maybe it's like... That last winter really salted up the underside of this car because like, actually like recognize this brace thing. And I'm honestly not sure how much of a structural brace it could be. If I can just push and my foot like directly through it, it's so rotted. So took that out, but it's all back together. It's on the ground, welded diff. I will update soon with the other things to do Whew. pretty much everything else will be easier than that it's just gonna be camber arms uh, diff brace some free angle stuff 
And um, what else? I got some new wheels coming. Everything's gonna be a lot easier. That was the hardest part to get it drifting. And I mean, pretty much you could drive it as is. Like if someone's looking to get into, you know, drifting, if you got a 350Z, weld the diff, seats and a steering wheel, and you are like set. Oh, and some way to cancel out the uh, throttle cut, which I guess you really don't even need that either if you're just getting started. Whew. 370Zs though, you definitely have to cut power to that yaw sensor. But yeah, I'll pick this up when I come back to do the next things. You don't even have a shit. Oh. I miss your Del Sol. I do too. Hey Josh. What's up? Why is your 240 in my garage? Because I broke it. Your nice RB swap 240? Yeah. Look at this. We've got a full house. Oh. Hey, the gang's all here. Okay, Ted, what are you doing? You're doing things? Yeah, I'm doing things. You're doing uh, hike us delete stuff. Josh is, Josh is replacing his throttle bearing, and I have one of these lovely Bell Raceworks diff braces to put in, among other things. But this is first. So hot. What? Behind it's going to touch the hiney. Boom. That couldn't have even have taken 15 minutes to put in. The hardest part is getting the nut on the back side of that hole up there and I just electrical taped it to the wrench. Um, and I, I didn't put the bolt in ahead of time so I had to pull the speed sensor out. But other than that, piece of cake. On to the next thing. I'm also test fitting my new wheels. Ooh, fuck yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for the enthusiasm. <laughs> <laughs> you got your bolt out, but it sounded like you were really excited about my wheels. <laughs> they look so small in comparison to the 19s, but they'll be fine. I did the maths right, too, because when I zero out the camber, they should fit, like, perfect. They're, like, tucking in only because of the camber, which is, it's going to be awesome when I pull that in. Oh, but you know what? Oh, no, because the, the, the camber pulls in the bottom. So that should be perfectly flush. Well, that's Yo, that's a good looking wheel on this car. Yeah, I know the CI tires are nice. Just kidding. <laughs> They're actually really beat up. I, I don't approve of your behavior. What about the 350Z track wheels? Oh, those are, yeah, those are, those are the best out of everyone. Those fancy, get out of the way. I'm trying to show the pretty wheels. The ones from my RX-7 that just happen to look so amazing on Ted's car, it's not even funny. Boom, roasted. The common theme of my YouTube channel is just all the cars Ted buys that he doesn't put the RB25 in. It's the major arc of this of our overarching story is eventually on the last episode of, of our YouTube channel, whenever I decide to give up on YouTube will be the day you put in an RB25. Okay, that's just stupid. What are you doing? <laughs> Good form. <laughs> Josh, you're neck deep in your engine bay. <laughs> oh my god! This is I, this is how I imagine diesel guys work on their trucks. <laughs> what have we learned? <laughs> Don't put the top bolt back in. <laughs> Bingo. Why just a warning? Oh, and that front wheel is on point two. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Oh, it's gonna look so good. This would have been the equivalent to me running, I think, like a, a 21 or something millimeter spacer in the front with the stock wheels when I had the 15s. And I knew it would be good because I wish I had like another five. I wish I used like a 20 with the stock one. So hopefully it doesn't rub because these are going to have a pretty fat tire. Um, these are going to have a 245-45 on them as well. Even though they're an eight and a half. So they, it's going to be a pretty meaty tire. 
So hopefully it clears. Chonk. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm running on the rear of the <laughs> I'm just very content with that tire, with that rim. Good look. It looks so tiny with no tire, though. Yeah, it does. But. Sweet! Oh, next up on the cheap drift mods. We're gonna work on seeing if we can get some more angle out of this thing. So I just pulled the tie rods out and measured up the tie rod end and the rack itself. And it seems like a three quarter inch, that's not one. It seems like a, uh, God, what did I do with it? <laughs> and it looks like a typical three quarter inch socket would actually make a great little rack spacer. Um, the OD of the tie rod is a little smaller than this, but the OD is perfect. I'm gonna play around with a couple different sizes, but essentially I'm gonna you know, measure up like six millimeters of this and cut it as clean as I can and grind it perfectly flat. And then we'll make two of those and those will be some little rack spacers. And everyone should have one of these laying around, hopefully. And then the other thing is we're gonna grind off the bump stops or the steering angle stops, whatever you call them, that are on the side. Where'd it go? This side? Yeah. You can't see that at all. This thing, this doohickey. So this unbolts and then we're gonna grind that stop off. So here's the bump stop piece out of the car. This actually holds in the strut. So you take off, there's three 14s and then there's the strut nut, which is a 19. And then these come off. And basically we just have to grind off this chunk here. So we're gonna grind off both of these welds on both pieces, clean them up, probably give them a coat of paint or something so they don't look like garbage. Um, and then we'll move on to the rack spacers. Got those all grinded off, threw some paint on them quick. Um, I actually test fitted a couple different sockets too. Um, I have this 11 16 deep socket, like a 12 point. Um, it actually fits a little snugger around the tie rod end and it's a little under an inch for the uh, outer. So I think that might be a better option um, than having that three quarter kind of slopping around. So I'm gonna try this one. Plus it's a socket I use a lot less and I really don't care about it. So I'll measure that up, give that a shot. But yeah, the goal is to make sure they stay nice and flat. So I'm gonna have to scribe it all the way around, um, cut it a little big and then probably sand it flat on the uh, disc sander. And here's what I'm finished with. Six millimeters, about six and a half millimeters off the edge of a socket. So let's go test fit that and see if that'll work. On the edge of the rack and it's still big enough to hold in the o-ring that sits on the end sweet hey ted yeah. are you available uh, you want to do me a favor and turn turn my wheel all the way to the left please hold on back off a bit Okay, now do it again. Keep going. Keep going. Oh, hell yeah. Sick. Getting there. So now what I did was I backed this nut out by the width of the spacer. So now I'm just gonna, con I'm gonna tighten in the tie rod until this meets there and then kind of snug it down that way it'll be a lot closer when i go to do the alignment toe setting um, before we did any of this it was 72 and a half on both sides so zero toe and right now just checking it i can't hold the camera and pull them both taut but it's 72 and a half on both sides so i was shooting for either zero or about a 16th out and i got zero so i'm just going to leave it at that i'm going to take it for a ride make sure the wheel's straight and if not i'm going to offset the tie rods to make the wheel straight but uh, before I do that actually I want to I'm going to measure the steering angle so I'm going to put a tape line 
here. And then I'm going to turn to full lock and put another tape line. And then I'm going to measure the angle because I'm actually curious to see what you can get with those essentially free mods, <laughs> like whatever the cost of an 11 sixteenths. What was it? 11 sixteenths? 11 sixteenths socket. Josh is still struggle bussing. Now it looks like he's pulling his engine out. He had to drop his subframe and like lift his engine or hold his engine and... Oh wow, that was a throwback. That's why you don't buy uh, DNA motoring exhaust manifolds. <laughs> Dude, I'm really wishing now that I had an engine cradle. Yeah, right. I feel like that would have made this job way easier for you. Josh, I can't tell which way your head is. Oh, you're in a hoodie. Hey. Hey. Oh, I got you. I got you. I got you. I got you. So this was all because of a throttle bearing. So we've, if, if this, if, if, the, if, if the problem is still there and it wasn't the throttle bearing, we're all going to evacuate the nearby vicinity. So Josh can have a rage moment because this is uh, going to suck. Okay. That is not bad. Look how much angle that is. So I'm going to do some trigonometry because I don't have a protractor. Actually, do I have a protractor? Woo! Protractor. We're doing high school math, people. Okay. What'll it be? I don't know why I wasn't in the smart math. Because I had the highest grade in my seventh grade math class. Whoa. I just didn't. I just wasn't. 43 degrees 43 degrees I really 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 should have uh, done this before I did the mod <laughs> why didn't I do this before like to measure the difference I'm just gonna say it helped because now there's 43 degrees but I don't know what it was before I'm assuming it was somewhere in the 30s I've, I've heard that you get somewhere between, you know, five to seven degrees of angle or something by doing this stuff. So. But that's pretty spicy. Josh, that sounds like a good thing that's going on over there. Yeah. Harder than going on easier than it That's good. I can drift with that. You've done it before, too. <laughs> How much angle do you have, Josh? You want us to measure it? You want me to embarrass you? So that'll be it for today, but I'll be back when I get the new tires mounted on the new wheels and I'll close it out when uh, I got those on the car.